much easier it makes life for when the sun is shining because usually if the sun is not out you get the sea fret that rolls in from the channel and uh, well it makes it very difficult there's uh, number 17 very adjacent young Dale Gibson claims a three on this one Dale had a word with Jonathan a little bit earlier just Dale, a year ago it was a great moment for you when you won the Stewards Cup on very adjacent He's rather lost his way since. Is that because he's gone up in the weights, do you think? Well, he's gone up an awful lot from last year. Um, he was very well in for the Stewards' Cup last year. He raced off 71, and he's gone up really 17 pounds effectively. He was then beaten at Brighton eight days later, um, so the handicapper hasn't really given him very much of a chance. Well, he's changed stable since then, and you've been riding him all season. Any sign of a return to form? Well, as a typical sprinter, he's run a little bit in and out. He ran very well first time out at Newbury, finished fifth. And he ran reasonably well at Salisbury on his penultimate start when he was fourth with nine stone seven. Um, we're very well drawn today. There's a, a, a lot of speed on the far side, so I'm just hoping for, for the luck of the draw and the luck of the race. Thanks very much. They are one of our talented riders, one of our new boys, and he'll be one that fills the shoes of the likes of Willie Carson and our older senior riders when they pack up, and what an intelligent lad he is too. That's Dale Gibson, and he's drawn 30. There you can see the grandstand, well, that's the brand new grandstand that Peter O'Sullivan opened a little bit earlier on, and it's rather attractive, I think. It's uh, really in the mode of a, of a festival, a circus, a three-ring circus, as you might say, like a big top ten, and, uh, well, the crowds are really loving it today. They're spilling out down to the rail you can see hardly see a blade of grass here on the lawns this is the place to come and enjoy yourself this is number 18 Bertie Worcester well he's not without a chance Bertie Worcester he was fifth of 28 in the Wokingham at Royal Ascot he's suited by six furlongs but uh, I wonder John if he might find this six just a little bit sharp possibly Jimmy but I didn't think he ran too badly at Ascot uh, last Friday when you and I were watching the race together didn't have the best of runs and uh, finished fifth to a satirist. John Williams has the mount. John Williams had several horses he could have ridden in this race. Might be significant. He's on Bertie Wooster. Let's have a look at the betting. And there's uh, further money for the favourite. Easy line, eight to one. Amigo Menor, tens. Macrobian and Maznoon have gone down to 12 to 1 from 14 to 1. Azanak, K. Dara and Knight of Mercy with Rivers Rhapsody all on 14 to 1, 16 to 1, Resolute Bay. And very adjacent has gone from 16s to 18 to 1 and it's from 20 to 1 the rest. Well, this is one that shouldn't be too much of a problem to pick up. This is uh, Absolution running in blinkers. Michael Hills is on uh, Absolution's back. Well, I think five furlongs is more to his liking than six, but he's got a sharp six here today. John, what do you think? He's got plenty of speed, Jimmy, but uh, he's won seven times from 44 starts. Ran quite well at Newbury, went fifth to the dead heaters, R. Freddy and Lucideo, ten days ago. Drawn two, and as we were saying earlier, I don't particularly like that draw on this fast ground 50 to 1 in the betting so he doesn't have all that many supporters here Michael Hills in the saddle has gone freelance I was rather really disappointed that the team of Michael and Barry came to an end but there you go owners are funny people they pay the trainers bill and uh, well they like to have the last decision there's number nine this is Rivers Rhapsody. She goes into stall 11, nice and quietly. Most of, a lot of the runners are all in. Peter. Yeah, that looks uh, just about it. They're under orders. And they're away. And over on the far side, let's be honest about it, in the sheepskin noseband, breaks very fast with very adjacent upside. Sporting Simon is right with them. Copper Mill Lad is a back marker at the moment. Prohibition is well there with Silka Supreme in the center. Towards the right of the picture, Resolute Bay, Micro Love, Easy Lions got it to do at the moment. Amigo Menor is right up there with the lead. And Amigo Menor just about has the lead now from Silka Supreme and Love Legend over on the far side. And on the near side, it's Absolution leading Micro Love, Macrobian, and Gallant Hope running very strongly in the center. But over on the far side, Amigo Menor from 
Soka Supreme, and let's be honest about it, in Love Legend in the centre of the horse, centre of the course, it's Gallant Hope, and up with Gallant Hope is Resolute Bay, and then comes Cantorius just in behind the lead, and, and Cumbrian Waltz are putting in a good run towards the near side, but it's Amigo Menor over on the far side with the advantage. Amigo Menor from Resolute Bay on the near side, and Bocas Rose putting in a tremendous run as they race up towards the line of Amigo Menor, and just coming up, coming up, taking it up now, is Nida Marcy, and Katie's and at the line. It's a very near thing indeed. It's a very, Katie's first, and Nida Mercy right up there. Katie's first, may just about have won it, but the judges call for a photograph to all places with uh, Katie's first, may just about have got there over on the far side with uh, Knight of Mercy not far behind him, Amigo Menor was the leader right up towards the line, Maznoon was not far behind him either, but this is a very, very close one indeed, and I wouldn't like to predict it, it's a letter P in the frame showing a very, very close one indeed. Amigo, Amigo Menor on the far side, Knight of Mercy, uh, Maz Noon the Grey and uh, Bocas Rose and Micro Love right up there too. It's very, very close indeed. Well, this is a fantastic reproduction of the Wokingham Stakes because it's said the race has been dominated by the two horses who were first and second in, in the Wokingham. Amiga Manor on the far side looked like making every yard of the running. He's clearly headed that uh, far side group throughout the race. Absolution ran very fast on the stand side. Gallant Hope was there in the center of the course. On the far side, Silka Supreme weakening now as his love letter. Now look back to the yellow colours of Knight of Mercy coming out of the pack to throw down this challenge in the last furlong. Masnoon is well there as well, making good headway. Masnoon's run a terrific race. Amiga Manor still in front at this point on the far rails. Love letter dropping out. And here comes Bruce Raymond, the late booking for Knight of Mercy. This horse has got so much courage. He closes all the way to the line. About 50 yards from the line, he finally gets to Amiga Manor, just as he did in the Wokingham. He's thrust his head in front, and for me, he's definitely won it. Whether Amiga Manor has held on to be second, I don't know. But for me, Knight of Mercy becomes only the second horse this century to win the Wokingham Stakes and the Stewards' Cup. And what a ride from Bruce Raymond. Yes, it looks as though he's got there all right. Bocas Rose, the very fast finisher on the near side. Amigo Menor, of course, on the far side. And Maznoon, uh, right up there in the fighting line, too. Amigo Menor over on the far side. The grey, of course, uh, Maznoon. Night of Mercy, just ahead of them on the near side, uh, Bocas Rose. Katie's first, just behind them. So just uh, the letter P in the frame as we still await the official outcome of the 1990 William Hill Stewards Cup. The race is yet another triumph for trainer Richard Hannon. He certainly had the first and either first and second or first and third. Here's the result. Knight of Mercy is the winner. Second is Bocas Rose. And third is Amigo Manor.